As the comic industry scrambles to deal with problems it's had for decades, one shop has decided to reward its failure. But before I get started with that, I would like to express gratitude, something the comic industry has had a hard time with lately. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the channel and liked and shared the videos. It really has helped, and I thank you for your continued support. Now, let's talk about the shop that bought the new New Warriors 500 times and a comic industry that refuses to change. Nerderotic.com Well, I think we're already past the tipping point, and that's where I, I keep referring to this, the kind of the dialogues that we're having about how to better sell new comics as, as you know, like trying to chart a new path for the Titanic. Stay calm, this is not happening. Father! So what, it's not happening. Father, it is! Get on board! No thanks. Who do you think you are? Panic mongers. I think I Brazil is sinking. Well, I know, I think you'll find it's all a question of what you want to believe in, and I happen to have more experience in these matters than you do, I think. <laughs> Oh, we're ordering out of that damn previews catalog. And look where that got you. The minute previews shut down, all of a sudden you had no money coming in anymore. I had no intention of making another Snowflake and Safe Space video until the book actually came out. I've maintained they are the living embodiment of everything that is wrong with the comic book industry. And if Marvel canceled the book, in print at least, it would show that they are serious about actually selling comics and not extending middle fingers to their paying customers. That being said, make no mistake about it. This book is coming out and it's coming out with the help of a comic shop who has decided to buy 500 copies of the new New Warriors. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> the new New Warriors isn't the parody, the entire industry is. And while the definition of insanity is a bit on the nose here, it doesn't make it any less true. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And it's not just this comic shop. Steve Jeppy from Diamond Comics has finally, two months into this, rolled out his plan to save the comic book industry. He has stated he wants things to be better than they were before. How is he going to do that? He would like you to buy a t-shirt. But let's start with little Richie Johnston's article about a comic shop that bought 500 copies of the new New Warriors. And you will notice, because you are smart, beautiful people out there, that this article really isn't about that. Let's take a look. The comic store that ordered 500 copies of Marvel's New New Warriors. And please bear with me as I read a Rich Johnston written article. Marvel Comics is still planning publishing New Warriors a five-issue miniseries written by the late show with Stephen Colbert writer and producer Daniel Kibblesmith. Ah, remember when Colbert was funny? It was right around the last time comics were good. My first guest tonight, as you can see, is Mr. Bubble, followed by a musical performance by the legendary duo Head & Shoulders. The team is made up of all new heroes with a diverse range of backgrounds, including two called Safe Space and Snowflake. For some people, this is the worst thing in the world. Au contraire, Richie, this thing has been glorious. Make no mistake, I don't like what it represents, but the comic in and of itself is a gift from the YouTube gods. Is a terrible comic, even though no one has read it as it hasn't even been printed. I was wondering about that, so apparently, according to Richie Johnston, the book hasn't been printed yet. Curious, considering it was supposed to come out April 15th, and apparently is responsible for the entire edifice of the comics industry collapse. And this is where Rich tries to be funny, bear with me. Somehow there wasn't this much hatred over Marvel's clearly virtue signaling to elephantine power pachyderms, which reinvented each of the X-Men as elephants. Ma, I'm gonna be a comedian. <laughs> but then we didn't have Twitter. Oh, that is true. 
a video trailer for the comic for Marvel has been downvoted 226,000 times as opposed to 4,000 upvotes, though it was watched by over a million viewers so far. I will not argue that the Streisand effect is in play here, but that does cut both ways. More on that later. Naturally, there has been dozens of YouTube videos from the usual suspects mocking the very existence of this comic and blaming all of the industry's ills on it. Now, I apologize in advance because most of you have common sense, but there might be a Rich Johnston watching this video because it's about him mainly, and I have to explain out loud how disingenuous this argument is. The comic book is not causing the ills of the industry. The comic book is the result of the ills of the industry, Little Richie, but you know that. Something that I thought was amusing considering an earlier example from the mid-70s of a low-selling comic book, and I'm sure you thought it was amusing when you compared the new New Warriors to giant size X-Men. Nevertheless, the mocking continued, reaching an apogee on the Joe Rogan Experience TV show on a section labeled Joe Rogan Learns About the Most SJW Comic Book Ever Made, racking up another three quarters of a million views on YouTube alone. And I know that drives you crazy, little Richie. The problem is, it's your own damn fault. Your friends in the access media, and you in particular, have driven a lot of people over to YouTube. Now, it's not like the criticism is all one-sided. Rogan says he can't believe the comic is not a parody, and that's what everyone thought it was at first, and there are a number who believe it is, which it isn't. These are from folks less likely to make YouTube videos about it at all but they see the Marvel Comics PR for New Warriors as looking like they are mocking diverse comics or looking like a super bigoted parody of diverse superhero comic. Diverse superhero comic. I think you mean of a diverse superhero comic. And wow, the new new team is like peak peak cringe. In the grand scheme of things, this comic book is indeed a parody. It just didn't intend to be because it's part of an industry that is a parody of itself. Marvel has been canceling the printing of a number of comic books caught up in the shutdown and switching some to digital only, but there has been no mention of New Warriors yet. There has been the suggestion that the immense ridicule that the PR received will lead Marvel to cancel the comic. Well, thank you for watching, Richie. I really do appreciate the click. But if you listen to what I said two videos ago, I said it would be a good sign if Marvel canceled the comic in print and it went to digital only because that would be the best of both worlds. I could still review it and it wouldn't hurt any comic shops. But go ahead and release it. It's no skin off my back whatsoever. Do it. Now, I'm sure you noticed, because you are smart and beautiful people out there, that we are four paragraphs in, and I didn't even read them all, and we haven't talked about the comic shop owner who bought the new New Warriors 500 times, because it's not about that. It's about influence, that thing the Access Media and Richie Johnston at Bleeding Cool don't have anymore. However, one comic book retailer has seen an opportunity, Mr. Smith, of Mr. Smith's comics in Mr. Smith's region sees things very differently. Politically, Mr. Smith is generally on the conservative side of American politics. He's the kind of person who some might caricature as being against the existence of such a comic. But what Mr. Smith cares about the most is whether he can sell a comic or not. He saw the millions of views on YouTube and is enthusiastically supporting Marvel Comics' decision to still publish the comic. He tells Bleeding Cool, no press is bad press. Marvel's upcoming title, New Warriors, has been taking a beating on social media and beyond. One posting over 100,000 views. There's way too many eyes on this title for me to dismiss it. My opinion, fans aren't going to be able to not take a peek. It's the car crash you pass by on the highway. You try not to look, but you just have to. I ordered 500 copies of the first issue. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's my best guess that the motivation behind any Richie Johnston article is Richie Johnston, but there are multiple ways you can look at this fluff piece. 
he might be clowning Mr. Smith for buying the new New Warriors 500 times, or it's much more likely he is clowning YouTubers because we made multiple videos on this subject and we might have turned this comic book into a best seller. <laughs> At least somebody can sell comic books. I still got it. <laughs> the only thing that proves is YouTubers can sell more comics than Marvel can. I wonder what percentage of the print run Mr. Smith's order may end up making up. Also, what kind of markup he will be expecting by the end of the week. I mean, who knew that a look at Batman's wiener would cause such a fuss? Really, Rich? If Mr. Smith sells all 500 copies of the new New Warriors, he'll make a whopping $1,000. But now, Mr. Smith will be nationally known and associated with the middle finger that is the new New Warriors. Richie Johnston tries to downplay it as he has tried to downplay everything about the industry until it actually started collapsing. So the king of the disingenuous argument will do what he does. That double-edged sword of the Streisand effect that I was talking about, it cuts both ways. But I'll tell you who will walk away with this without a scratch. Richie Johnston and YouTubers. This brings us briefly to Steve Jeppe and Diamond Comic Distributors calls on retailers to hashtag back the comeback. Today, Diamond Comics Distributors sent out the below letter to comic book retailers for their hashtag back the comeback campaign for distribution from Diamond to return to comic book stores from this coming Wednesday and beyond. Stores depending. Jeppy previously stated that every store would have to make that call for themselves and the campaign is non-date specific. However, there's social media, hashtags, and a website where folk can sign up for updates and even order t-shirts. Now, I went over this in detail on a live stream yesterday, which I will link in the description. It's on my alternate channel Nerdrotic Live. If you like my live streams, please go check it out because that's where all of them go when they are finished right here. Now, I'll try to keep this as simple as possible. Let's start with the hashtag back the comeback. Okay, it's not bad. It's positive, but it seems to be missing something like the word comic. I would like it with comic book, but I would settle for comic. And let's talk about this logo. Now, I might sound a little nitpicky here, but that's the best you could come up with. You are in the business of comic books. It is an artistic medium, and this looks like it was slapped together on Photoshop in five minutes, and I see what you're doing. You're flipping the script on Frederick Wortham's Seduction of the Innocent, which led to the comic collapse and the Comics Authority stamp. But if you take a close look at both of these stamps, you're noticing one is missing that keyword. Comic! And I don't need to remind anybody, but I will anyway, that you required a loan to stay in existence because you shut down two weeks into the crisis. Uh, Diamond Howe, however, though, has restructured the company recently. This led to a lot of rumors about the solvency of Diamond. Uh, would you like to take some time to assure us that there is not Love a to. particular solvency problem? Because that's a obvious question anybody would ask and i uh, i'd like to say that diamond is in great shape diamond in the last six months we became an account of jp morgan chase the biggest bank in this in the country and one of the biggest banks in the world and i have to tell you they have been unbelievable when we set that plan out for payment to the publishers everything that we outlined in the payout schedule was all done within the confines of our existing credit facility without having to ask for anything else. We had to tell them because so, they were going to see collateral going down and the line of credit going up. For you nitpickers out there, he did say an extension on a line of credit, not a loan. And you'd be right. But what that isn't is liquid. And what that isn't is confidence building. So you can't blame any current, former, or future retailer or people who are just observing for being a little bit skeptical right now. Is there a point where there are so few comic shops that distribution becomes no longer financially viable and do retailers have a plan if Diamond closes up? Chuck, what do you think about this? Well, I think we're already past the tipping point. No, I'm not dancing on the graves of comic shops. I'm trying to get you guys to have some real conversations to solve the real problems in this industry before it's too late, which it might be for a lot of shops, not everybody, not the industry, not Marvel and DC, but for the thing I care about, 
the paying customer, and the independently owned comic shop. I would love to see thousands more out there. I want to see comics everywhere. 7-Elevens, grocery stores, Walgreens, Indiegogo campaigns, and more Indiegogo campaigns. Walmarts everywhere because more people reading comics is more people reading comics, and that will bring more people to your stores. Have some confidence. The comic industry isn't all bad, but it certainly has some flaws. It needs to work out immediately. It's petty, it's insecure, it's self-destructive, and its largest publisher has produced a comic book called The New New Warriors that beautifully encapsulates this. That you never, ever rely on institutions that you think are going to be around forever because they're not necessarily going to be. And so what we have right now is a comic book industry that has relied upon diamonds that has relied upon the fact of, hey, let's focus on turnover, let's focus on maximization of revenue streams within the context of getting stuff every week. That's so lazy. It is, it is being a diamond catalog outlet store where you're like a fuller brush salesman, where you're just waiting for your new shipment of brushes to show up. And then you're hoping that the people that promised to pay you actually will and won't walk up to the counter and say, oh, you know, this one really sucks. I think I'll just put it back. The New New Warriors by Daniel Kibblesmith is just another crap Marvel book that just so happens to symbolize the culmination of everything that's gone wrong with the comic book industry beyond the politics of it, the variants, the quality, the amount of books that Marvel puts out on top of that garbage has saddled comic book shops for a long time so Marvel can play their little experiments for their movies. Are AT&T and Disney going to actually want to rev up their product lines enough to provide revenue streams that are large enough for stores that have been so goddamn lazy. I am gonna repeat this for emphasis. Okay, when all you do is you get a catalog in, you hand it to your customers, and then your big skill is compiling the numbers and turning in the order, give me a break. Okay, that's not really retailing. Um, that's just being an agent. And uh, everybody that's been an agent for Diamond is biting it right now hard. The comic book crisis is just beginning, so I guess it remains to be seen what comic book pros decide to start getting serious. Or are they just going to continue to be the industry that loves to cut off their nose despite their face? Until next time, everyone have a great day. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. NerdErotic.com, please subscribe.